Just a quick update before the video, did you know gaming is giving away a Nintendo Switch and three games? Check the link at the top of the description for more information. Did you know? Smash Ultimate's project plan seems to be dated around December 16th, 2015. Hardcore fans may know the significance of this date, as it was the same day as the final Smash broadcast for Smash for 3DS and Wii U. Sakurai stated in an interview with Denfaminico Gamer that this was just a coincidence, as he'd been working on the plan for quite some time. Before Smash for 3DS and Wii U were completely finished, Sakurai told gaming magazine Famitsu that his next project was already decided and that he'd be taking a short break. Actual work on the next installment of Smash wouldn't pick up until Bayonetta and Korin were released as DLC. Interestingly, Sakurai considers Smash Ultimate to be the sixth entry in the series. This is because while the roster is the same between the 3DS and Wii U games, their different stages and features make them unique. Speaking of rosters, when Sakurai first presented the idea of bringing back every character in Smash history, he was met with complete and utter silence from his team. Sakurai was one of the few people outside of Nintendo who saw the Switch in its early development stages. He was surprised by how great the system screen became. The advancement in screen quality from the early prototype stages meant that Smash Ultimate could keep the same menu UI in both handheld or portable mode. The project plan for Smash Ultimate was quite ambitious and was over 200 pages long. This is because Sakurai used a lot of graphics and simple text to convey his vision. The top graphic represents what was in his project plan, images of micro-men in various poses for attacks, and the bottom graphic represents the final version of that move. With a little under three years of development time, the team had quite a challenge. While the number of newcomers in new original stages is the lowest it's ever been in the series, Ultimate saw an expanded roster of 11 new characters and several veteran characters who were missing from Smash for 3DS and Wii U. In addition, nearly every single stage from Smash history was brought back. However, there are 18 missing stages from Smash history. Two stages from Smash 64, five from Melee, four from Brawl, two from Smash for 3DS, and five from Smash for Wii U. Some of these stages were just replaced by newer versions. For example, Flat Zone and Flat Zone 2 were combined into Flat Zone X. However, as of this video's debut, we aren't sure why stages like Poke Floats, Orbital Gate Assault, or Woolly World are missing. In order to make his project plan a reality, Sakurai used two advantages. First, he decided to work with Bandai Namco again. Bandai Namco developed both Smash for 3DS and Wii U, and were already equipped to handle the massive undertaking of Smash Ultimate. In addition, Sakurai decided to directly build upon Smash for Wii U in order to devote more time to new content. There is some evidence of this within the game's files, as the internal name for Smash Ultimate is Cross 2. The Wii U version was internally named Cross. Sakurai would send daily pictures to his team in order to share progress and to motivate them. This is something he started during the development of Kid Icarus Uprising and it has continued since then. He even claims to have sent pictures during the weekends. In a Famitsu column titled Smash is Special, Sakurai spoke about how difficult making Smash Ultimate was. Sakurai said, For starters, bringing back every fighter drastically increases the cost of development. Even something that looks like a simple port has a huge number of man hours behind it. Moreover, in the case of Smash, we can't simply create whatever we want. I have to receive approval from the original creators of the characters, and I need to reflect their feedback. Contractual agreements and other legal issues can also make development exceedingly difficult. In reality, it was quite a challenge to bring every fighter back, and I barely made it work. Frankly, it almost didn't happen. Speaking of cut or missing content, Smash Ultimate features a wealth of new additions that were cut from earlier Smash games. One of these additions is Sukupan as an assist trophy. Sukupan was planned to be an item in Melee, but was cut due to complicated circumstances, most likely copyright issues. Another piece of cut content from Melee was the Ditto Pokeball. Ditto was finally realized in Smash Ultimate, taking on the appearance of another fighter and joining the battle. Within Smash Ultimate itself, there are three spirit categories that are unused. These are Blast Core, Jet Force Gemini, and Devil's Third. It's unknown why these franchises are unused, but it may be due to copyright or licensing issues. While some information for the game had leaked out, Sakurai and his team went out of their way to prevent any major leaks. This included using a huge screen at E3 instead of paper materials. Many people within Nintendo themselves had no idea the game was under development. Reflecting on the E3 presentation, Sakurai stated he could hear the cheers of the Nintendo employees as well. While there were some minor leaks before Ultimate's unveiling at E3, the leaks didn't get major traction, making the concept of everyone is here a well-kept secret. 
keep things from leaking, the team decided to announce all the characters before the game's release. However, several aspects of the game were leaked ahead of official announcements. The first major leak was by a Bandai Namco employee who stated the studio was working on the title. Nintendo also accidentally leaked the existence of Castlevania content in Smash Ultimate before the official Simon and Richter reveal by accidentally renaming the Galaga melody on YouTube to Bloody Tears. While it was fixed before the Castlevania reveal aired, many internet spectators had already noticed the change. In addition, the game was leaked a few weeks before release due to stores in Mexico selling the game early. This allowed hackers and data miners to gain access to the game before its official launch. In terms of music, Smash Ultimate has an impressive amount of it. The team used a new compression technique in order to fit all 850 tracks into the cart. Without this, the price of Smash Ultimate would have risen severely, or many songs would have had to been cut. Some of the game's tracks ended up being heavily altered, or in some cases, redacted entirely. The beloved DK rap is missing verses for Lanky, Cranky, and Chunky, despite the song being used for Lanky and Chunky spirit battles. Fans have noticed this and started a campaign to restore the track, called Hashtag Expand Song on Twitter. Interestingly, the Japanese vocalist for the game's main theme, Life Light, was only 17 years old when she was chosen for the role. Arena Kogo was referred by Ultimate composer Hideki Sakamoto after seeing her in a television singing contest. Sakurai also wrote the lyrics to Life Light himself. During the development of Smash for 3DS and Wii U, Nintendo ran the Smash ballot to see which characters were most requested by fans. For Ultimate, the team used these ballot results to help decide new characters. The newcomers chosen from the ballot were King K. Rule, Ridley, and Simon and Richter Belmont. Sakurai wanted to add a new third-party universe into Ultimate and thought Castlevania was an ideal fit. However, he struggled with choosing a character and considered Alucard at one point. He decided that Simon and Richter were better candidates in part because their whips are iconic to the series. When deciding Ridley, Sekirei and his team landed on the concept of pure evil. This is evident not only through his moveset, but his initial reveal trailer where he straight up murders Mega Man by stabbing him in the chest. Incineroar was the only character whose inclusion was decided at a later point. A spot was left open for a new Pokemon rep, and after seeing the new Pokemon from Sun and Moon, Sakurai felt he had two choices, Incineroar or Decidueye. After mulling it over, Sakurai decided a fighter with a wrestling motif would be interesting, and decided on Incineroar. Incineroar was voiced by Unsho Ishizuka, who also voiced Professor Oak in the Japanese Pokemon anime. Unfortunately, Ishizuka passed away in August before the character was revealed. The creator of Bomberman, Shoji Mizuno, also passed away before it was shown that Bomberman would make it into Smash as an assist trophy. Spirits Mode was developed as a result of limitations set by Sakurai and the development team. They wanted a single-player mode that could utilize the game's plethora of stages, music, and characters. However, they didn't want the mode to drain too much of the team's resources. Fighting quick battles themed after a variety of video game characters allowed the team to make a sizable single-player campaign without taking too much focus away from the core game. It also allowed characters who wouldn't be playable in the game to have some representation. One interesting tidbit about Spirits is that a fan-made version of the Masked Man sprite from Mother 3 was used in Smash Ultimate. The sprite was originally made by Warpstar X on DeviantArt. The sprite was eventually changed in version 2.0 to be the actual sprite from Mother 3. Smash Ultimate surpassed the lifetime sales of every other Smash game in Japan in less than 5 weeks and as of this video has sold over 12 million copies worldwide. Ultimate was also Charles Martinet's 100th voice actor credit. The achievement earned Martinet a Guinness record for most voice credits in a video game. The game also credits four Smash players for their help with the game's development. Tomoyasu Yamakawa, Ryudo Hayashi, Yuya Araki, and Masaya Chikamoto were all credited for their help with testing and quality assurance. When thinking of what's next for Smash, Sakurai is unsure. He said that bringing back everyone is probably a one-time thing, and trying to top Smash Ultimate will be something he'll need to address if he's asked to come back again. However, Smash Ultimate isn't finished yet. There is still DLC to be made, the production of which is underway. The first two DLC characters have been announced, Piranha Plant and Joker from Persona 5. Joker's voice actor, Xander Mobus, also serves as the announcer for Smash Ultimate, as well as Smash for 3DS and Wii U. So not only is this the first time a Smash announcer has also voiced a fighter, it's also the first time an announcer has reprised their role. With tens of thousands of gaming accounts being hacked every month, online security is a real concern. To lower the risk of having your private information stolen by hackers, you should consider using ExpressVPN. VPNs stop phone and internet providers, advertisers, and hackers from tracking your net browsing data at home or over public Wi-Fi. VPNs also mask your IP address, allowing you to access content that's restricted from your region. Did you know gaming have used ExpressVPN to access videos and other content that were restricted by country for research? ExpressVPN is easy to set up, connects with a single click, and never logs your activity. 
ExpressVPN has 24-7 customer support, is consistently faster than other VPN providers, and was even rated the number one VPN by TechRadar. In addition to having apps for desktop and mobile devices, ExpressVPN also has a router app that protects every device on your network. And if you don't want more programs on your device, ExpressVPN has browser extensions for Chrome and Firefox. ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can take back your internet privacy today and find out how to get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description or going to expressvpn.com slash dykg. That's e-x-p-r-e-s-s-v-p-n dot com slash dykg for three months free with a one-year package. Visit the link in the description to learn more, and thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Push Dustin from Source Gaming for researching this episode, and if you want more Smash facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Masahiro Sakurai. Hey, thanks for listening to me talk about Smash Brothers. I assume you like hearing people talk about Smash Brothers, so if you want to hear somebody talk more about Smash Brothers, here's me talking about Smash Brothers.